Going to look at thermionic emission and the operation of an electron gun. Last time we looked at discharge tubes and cathode rays. Um, but then a couple of years later, so actually around the same kind of period of time, it was discovered that a hot conductor will lose an uh, a negative charge quite readily, um, but will struggle to lose a positive charge. And so um, from that, we get the idea that actually um, electrons, they, they're in a, we've got this, this model of metallic bonding where they're in this sea of delocalized electrons in the, in the lattice, and they need some energy in order to escape that lattice, a bit like the photoelectric effect, but in thermionic emission, this energy comes from thermal energy. So the, the thermal energy, um, well, temperature, I guess, being a, a, a measurement of average kinetic energy of molecules. Um, so those electrons in there are going to be moving around. Um, they're going to have more, more energy. And if, eventually it's possible to get enough energy that they, that they can leave. But actually, we don't, we don't necessarily need that, but we just want them to be able to leave um, a lot more easily than, than before. If you've got a, a similar setup to before, like you've got your really high potential difference, your negative um, filament, you heat it up, then you can actually produce a cathode ray um, when you haven't got any gas at all. So they, they used gas in the previous discharge tubes um, in order to, to um, create this, this cathode ray kind of effect. But with thermionic emission, the electrons can come from the, the hot filament. And so we've got here, I've got an evacuator tube. It's the same tube as I showed you last time. Um, but last time I was just using it as a, an example, a bit of a fudge, and we were not talking about the heater that's this end. But actually there is a heater that's this end. There's no gas in this tube. And when you turn it on, you do get a green dot on the fluorescent screen the other side. What's going on here is I've got the negative, um, the neg negative charge on this. There's a, a filament behind it's in this, behind this blue stand and you can't see it because even if I took the tube out, um, actually, Actually, it's this thing that's glowing here. That's why it's glowing like a, like a light bulb. So um, if, you, if it was real life, you could possibly peer in and see something. But the filament that's glowing here because it's hot and it's, like it's um, connected to the negative side of my 5,000 volt supply. And then here, I've got a, a cylinder. Well, it's got, there's, a, there's, a hole in the, there's a hole in this piece. And this is, posit this is the positive side of my um, potential difference. So the electrons are accelerated from the filament through this positive um, piece because it's got a hole in it, and then the um, then we've accelerated the electrons. Um, so we've got this beam of electrons that hits this screen, and and um, then uh, that will fluoresce and show the and, and show you where the electrons are hitting the screen. With this um, electron gun setup, then we can with there's some measurements that we can that we can make. We can work out actually how fast these electrons are going because, and they might ask you to do that in an exam, and we're, we're gonna use that information actually in that kind of process um, next lesson when we talk about specific charge and how JJ Thompson um, measured the specific charge of an electron. But if we know the potential difference, um, then we know how much energy we've given these electrons because we can use our equation for um, the definition of the volt even, that um, potential difference is energy per unit charge. So that means that energy will be um, potential difference multiplied by charge and the charge on an electron obviously being E. Um, so sometimes you'll see it in textbooks as E, sometimes as, as Q. That's the energy that these electrons have when they're just going through this through the cylinder here. Um, and we can assume that all of that is um, turned into kinetic energy and then we can use half mv squared and we can work out how fast um, an electron is travelling at this point. Um, and yeah, well that's that. That then we can use um, for the specific charge stuff that's going to happen later on. But actually, um, you might need to use that just for a standalone question. So that's this. This kind of thing is called an electron gun. This whole tube is a, a kind of rudimentary version of a cathode ray tube, which were used in um, TVs up until well, not very long ago really. When I was a kid, cathode ray cathode ray tube TVs, big old things. Um, and oscilloscope screens that you've, if you've used our oscilloscopes there, they've got um, cathode ray screens in them. So um, they're quite an important bit of physics, but we don't use them anymore particularly.